The hallmark of a good urban legend is relative believability. Sure, there are enough mass murderers and monsters to fill the collective minds of children around the world for years to come, but for something to capture the attention of the world at large, there has to be a little more substance. Or just as much substance as, say, Jack the Killer, but with a believable or less outlandish idea behind it. See, urban legends are a way for us to make sense of the world around us. We can manage threats better when we hear of dangerous things happening in stories. These myths act as proof of our beliefs and validate our worldviews, even if they're not true. Considering this, you would think that in the age of the internet, where facts should be at our fingertips at any given moment, false beliefs would get squashed. This is unfortunately not the case, as people often read something and just immediately take it as fact. And these urban legends spread even faster now with some especially scary stories. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be counting down the Top 5 Scary Internet Urban Legends. Before we get going, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more myths and magic. Perfect, let's begin. Coming in at number 5, we've got the Two Striped Telemonia Spider. We're going to start this one off with an older tale. This one was actually quite popular back in the late 90s, the golden age of chain emails. It's likely that this urban legend was so effectively spread thanks to the relative inexperience of all online users, but it almost seems too silly to be real nowadays. Actually, wait. There are much less believable stories flying around the internet today. Never mind. Back to the actual urban legend though, there were many reports of the venomous two-striped telemonia spider being found under public toilet seats. You know, as spiders do. Accounts were widespread, with stories popping up with various twists, making them seem like these spiders were biting and killing toilet users all over America. In fact, it got so popular that the telemonia got a nickname, the Butt Spider. Hmm, seems legit. It gained notoriety through lots of chain mail and reposts, you know, the kind of stuff that your tech illiterate great aunt would fall for. Don't forget to look, this is really scary in the subject line, etc, etc. One of the most famous chain emails detailed three bites in Chicago. The recipient suffered from fever, chills, vomiting, muscular collapse, paralysis, and eventually, death. Sheesh, that is a scary spider, all from sitting on a toilet seat. The three women who fell victim to this terrible spider were seemingly unconnected until it was discovered that they had all recently visited the same restaurant. At first, people were blaming the food until a waitress came in to grab her check and use the washroom without eating. She also fell victim to these symptoms, which prompted investigators to check out said washroom. Lo and behold, they found a spider who liked cold, damp climates and had a deadly bite. The Arachneus gluteus. Seems silly now, but this spider was taken very seriously back then. This urban legend was actually started by a guy named Steve who wanted to prove how silly chain mail could be. He dropped in a bunch of hints like the name of the spider to ensure nobody would take it too seriously. But people still did, and they even put their own spin on the story, replacing ridiculous aspects with real ones. And as it circulated more, more folks became afraid of spiders and public washrooms. Way to go, Steve. You nailed it. Coming in at number four, we have teens sewing their mouths shut. Parents will believe anything if they think it's harming their kids. Video games cause violence. Classic books are bad influences. There are secret demonic messages in pop music. Now, those examples have been around for a while, even pre-internet. However, now that the internet is alive and well, there is a whole new category of bunk that people will believe has undue influence on their children. Viral Facebook posts with new moral panics attached each week. Stories about bullying, predators, dangerous apps, and more. It's enough to make your head spin. If someone can find an image of something seemingly dangerous and put a panicky caption below it, you better believe that all the Karens and Carols will share it like there's no tomorrow. The one we'll talk about today seems to imply that teens are going to undergo extreme body modification just for kicks. Folks were saying that teenagers had been sewing their mouths shut with needle and thread. I mean, I can see maybe giving yourself a piercing or a stick and poke tattoo, but why on earth would anybody sew their whole mouth shut for no reason? Posts were shared with an image of someone's lips apparently sealed via sewing kit, and folks were terrified that their kid would be the next to do it. Well, as it turns out, nobody was actually permanently closing their mouths. So what was actually going on? Apparently somebody had taken a screen grab from a YouTube makeup tutorial and convinced the world it was real. The actual image came from Promise Fun, who was doing a Halloween themed video where she cut dark string to different lengths and glued the pieces above and below her lips. 
It's a pretty convincing illusion with some makeup used to color the spot where each piece ended to make it look bloody and bruised. However, if you watch the video, you'd know that just by opening her mouth, the pieces fall away. But try convincing a soccer mom frothing at the mouth, though. Coming in at number three, we've got the Talking Angela app, Unsafe for Kids. I'm sure most people have heard some version of the story before, an app that spies on your kids and gets them to share personal information. Maybe it's run by hackers or pedophiles or both. This was a very popular tale when Talking Angela, a wide widely available app was at the peak of its popularity. Kids could talk and interact with a Parisian cartoon cat with features like facial recognition, voice playback, and a text-based chatbot. Rumors about Talking Angela's safety had been circulating since release, with all sorts of folks claiming that it was a luring tool for pedophiles or a front for hackers to speak with children. This led to the urban legend getting a little bit out of hand, with Facebook moms posting all sorts of ridiculous stuff that even got picked up by news organizations. A lot of these posts read something like, Attention! Parents and grandparents, do not download this app! I just saw a post from another mom and it says that it takes pictures of your kids without you knowing and it also knows where your kids are, and I asked my precious Caden what his name was and where he went to school. Oh, delete it right away or else. It's all very sensational, but hey, it's a new era of urban legends. Not all of this is totally unfounded though. Although it has been proven that Talking Angela is not run by hackers or pedophiles, it can engage in chat and ask questions, and it can share photos to social media. However, these features must be turned on by the user. I think the real lesson here is, don't leave little Tay Lee and Skylore alone with the iPad. They don't know any better. Coming in at number two, we've got Scary Clown Murders. Oh man, 2016 seems like it was so long ago at this point. I feel like I'm dredging up ancient memories that are actually only four years old. Who remembers the killer clown phenomenon, when creeps and freaks would wander around town in clown costumes carrying weapons? That was a wicked urban legend. Sure, plenty of folks were posting videos and pictures of the clowns meandering around, but most, if not all of these, were hoaxes. People had heard the rumors of it happening and decided to contribute to the legend in their own way. The first big story, though, was from the Global Sun, who reported that weapon-toting clowns had crossed the US border into Canada and killed 23 people. Yikes. People glommed onto this and it spread like wildfire. Unfortunately, not too many people read the whole article. If they clicked the link and made it to the bottom of the page, they would have realized that the Global Sun was a fake news site that doesn't publish factual stories. But by the time anyone had figured that out, it was too late. Clown fever had taken North America by storm. You couldn't log on to any social media without seeing some POV video of someone being menaced by a rubber masked assailant in the middle of the night. It even got to the point where residents of Greenville, South Carolina reported that clowns were trying to lure kids into the woods. Like most urban legends, there was no real evidence to back any of this up. It just seemed like people's innate fear of clowns was being exploited. And finally, at number one, we have Ebola zombies. Just like the more recent Corona zombies hoax, this story became legendary when somebody tried to capitalize on the fear and uncertainty surrounding a pandemic. After a Liberia-based newspaper published accounts of two Ebola victims coming back to life under mysterious circumstances, the internet exploded with theories and stories. Anything zombie-related seems to have a wicked grip on the minds of people everywhere, so this kind of story really sets the imagination alight. Remember the bath salt zombies? And voodoo zombies? People just want a zombie apocalypse, I guess. So after the newspaper published a story about two women coming back to life, the locals started to panic. They thought that women were ghosts and shouldn't live among them. Eventually, it got enough traction to make it to an international news outlet, but all the reports were missing key details. There was no information on how or when the patients were declared dead, and there was nothing on what happened between their deaths and their resurrections. It seems a little fishy, right? Well, the rumors died down after a while, but reports of a third victim coming back to life resurrected the Ebola zombie narrative. Even though this third case appeared to be satire, the internet was once again ablaze with Ebola zombie chatter. Since then, there have been no additional reports on these so-called zombies and no corroborating resurrections. So if there were Ebola zombies, there weren't too many of them, and their animation was not contagious. How many of these five urban legends have you personally encountered? What's your favorite internet urban legend? Do you think there's any truth to these stories? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more shaky ones from the top 5 scary SCP urban legends. C.L. Lyman says, True story. Shortly after reading about SCP-3008, I heard a news report that IKEA announced that it was building smaller stores. Seems that IKEA corporate got wise to 3008 and wanted to distance themselves from it as much as possible. Although the pickup only Ikeas seem to have gone under. Frank S says, sounds like my ex-wife, before she left me for a Super Saiyan 3 Goku Dakakimura pillow. I mean... It's a pretty nice pillow, I'm not gonna lie. Skelly Skeleton says, I'm wondering when you made these videos, do some of them scare you? I think I'm a pretty cool guy, and make videos and doesn't afraid of anything. Kristen Guerra says, some of these urban legends remind me of that Gravity Falls cartoon. 
Absolutely, Gravity Falls is a wicked vehicle for paranormal stories. An MTF reader says, I'm not a horror head, I'm a horror leg. Ah! And that's all the time we have for today. Before I scale the Empire State Building with small blonde woman in hand, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more interesting ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.